expat in training brought up um, sensationalism in some of the videos relating to robberies on jeepneys, etc. The reason I brought these things up is, firstly, you wouldn't expect it in the West. Uh, secondly, it seems to be on the rise. Now, when I was 2007 to 2011, I didn't know anybody that had been robbed on a jeepney. Now, today, I know friend Rob, um, they basically stole his money out of his wallet and put the wallet back in Cebu City. Um, there was a, a, an idiot that I advised that I would show him around the town. He just arrived, um, and I said, "Look, I'll show you around the town, etc. I'll come back and, like, you know, let you know the guy was going to rent an apartment, etc." I said, "Just give you like ten minutes to settle in. I'll come back." Blah blah. He went off, and he actually got robbed um, within half an hour of even being in the Philippines. Um, although he did wear one of those bum bags on the front of his um, stomach, but his entire budget was in there, nearly a thousand dollars. Like I said, I only take out money that I I need for that day, and the reason I do that is even if I get robbed, it's going to be a minimal amount. These videos are not sensationalist. What they are is to get people to think. Um, because a lot of this stuff you would not assume would happen in the West, but it does in the Philippines. Um, Talise has a, I've showed her another video relating to uh, driving uh, on one of the routes, actually has a police station due to the number of armed holdups. Um, because what people used to do is they'd rob the jeepney, bus would start, jump off, go under the bridge, and it's a shanty town down there. The police couldn't catch them. These things are on the rise. It's not, oh, well, this won't happen to me, etc. I would say be very careful. And I would also say that it's normally people that tell me it wouldn't happen to them, which, when it does happen, will not admit it ever did. Um, that's another thing over the years. I, that's why I quite happily will say, oh, this or that, because I'm trying to say, look, okay, you don't want to admit it, whatever, that's fine. It's why a lot of people will go broke in the Philippines, etc., and just quietly leave. Um, but I'd rather say, look, what happened, even though I don't mention their names, because it's to help other people, it's to help new arrivals. It's not sensationalism. It's about people being aware of things they need to be cautious of. Now, what's the odds on it happening? Who knows? Who knows? Because a lot of things don't get reported. If you look at the figures for Thailand and the number of tourists that get killed every year, British tourists, I think it's around 400 a year, um, which is quite a lot. But do you hear about it? How about the Philippines? It doesn't even have that statistic. It doesn't exist. It, it, they won't... It, there's Because most people will not register they even exist in the Philippines. Myself, I am disconnected with the UK as much as possible about it. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm in the Philippines, their business and my business separate. I am no longer a British citizen while I'm in the Philippines. I am myself in the Philippines. Um, that's it. I'm not expecting the British Embassy to come rush into my aid if something went wrong because they're unreliable, etc. I have no interest in it. So, like I'm saying, like these statistics, they don't even enforce saying, look, we want to know how many of our people were killed, etc. And trying to build a picture to warn people. Because what they do is they'll just put a notice on there saying, dangerous to travel here, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Job done. And that's what they do. It's a complete blanket. But people like myself, or yourself, etc. We all go to the Philippines. Now, it's not sensationalism. It, a lot of this is if you're new to the country... You have to be aware of it. Um, like I said, the guy with the bum bag, he had over a thousand dollars on his front sitting in jeepneys. Um, and they just robbed him within five minutes of being in the country. He got from the airport, probably by taxi, dropped off his luggage, decided to go for a ride on the local bus, gets robbed, comes back, has some sort of mental breakdown. Um, complete nutter. But the, the point is, if he had actually listened, he wouldn't have got robbed. Um, the whole point of all the videos I put out there is for information. 
you don't have to say, oh, well, this is so obvious, blah, 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 or whatever, because for some of us, it is. You know, I haven't been robbed on a jeepney. But at the same time, is because I take precautions for all this stuff. It's like the fake rice. Who would assume that somebody put plastic in rice? Well, then again, who would assume the Chinese would put melamine in baby food? The fact is, these things do happen. And this is where the whole point is here. If you're sitting there eating and going, this doesn't taste right, push it to one side. But some people actually just go, well, I'm eating it out of you know respect, etc. If it doesn't taste right, it doesn't taste right. That's it. Your, your well-being and health is the most important thing. And if you don't think Filipinos will do it, you're crazy. <laughs> A lot of Filipinos will not go to work if it's raining because they know it causes colds and fevers that's it you know <laughs> let's be honest if they're if they won't go in the rain why would you want to uh, digest stuff that could actually be harmful to you that's why the thing about the uh, Pepsi video where it's sort of saying well this isn't the Philippines but seeing it and you sit there and go well would this happen could it happen and the answer is yes and that's why you sit there and go, okay, well, next time I pick a bottle up and it's all scratched and doesn't look right, do you want to drink it? You know, has it been cleaned since somebody dropped a cigarette butt in it or whatever? I would want to uh, question it because it's all about thinking. If you're happy just going, well, I don't really care, that's fine. You know, that's up to you. But the whole point here is information sharing. Um because the ratio of people who've died, that's probably the easiest thing to do with this on. Before I went to the Philippines, um, the number of people involved in being killed or um, being jailed for things, for me, is insignificant. It's prob I probably know like one person in probably 10 years that die and going to jail, I can't even think of anybody that actually had something significant. Philippines, the number of people I know who died between 2007 and 2011 is over 20 people. Some of them quite severely. Um, some of them were murdered, for example. Some of them committed suicide. Some, of, some people were involved in motorcycle accidents, had parts amputated and later died of infection which is written up as natural causes because they survived for a period of time and then died so the ratio is much higher you know it's all about well I don't I don't have any of these problems you may not but the point is it's nice to be aware of any potential risks it's all about information gathering information sharing saying look be aware of this. You know, it's a it's a bit like Zambonga. Uh, Zambonga can be a bit of a hotbed. It, it's where we normally find people are getting kidnapped. And although you'll get a lot of people say, "Well, I've never had any trouble there," the one day they go there and something does happen, then they, they could have been saying for the last twenty years, "I've never had a problem there," but then the one day it does happen. It it's all about well, are you more at risk there than you are Cebu City? Yes. Are you more at risk in Samar? Um, currently, yes. <laughs> so you have to share the information. And I know a lot of other channels love the, hey, we're all great. Everything's fantastic in the Philippines. This is all fantastic. This is the holiday brochure version. If it was so great, why is it so many holiday companies do not come to the Philippines? because of insurance risks, because of the potential damage of something did happen, it would damage their business because they are putting people at a high risk. That is reality. It doesn't matter how fluffed up it is, there is often a grim side to life. The whole point here is you sit there, analyze the information, go, okay, well, that makes a bit of sense. Well, I knew that already. Well. I'm not really bothered about that. You just use the information to your advantage. 
you know, it's not cut and dry. A lot of it is just to provoke thought, a bit of thinking, a bit of protecting yourself against risk. All right, thanks for watching.